Facial fat or facial adiposity, the perceived weight on your face, has a major impact on your attraction and how you're perceived in the world. Our fat doesn't just store energy. It's essential living tissue capable of producing and releasing hormones that affect your other organs. And if you thought it was just a cosmetic concern, think again. Scientists are discovering that the amount of fat on your face could actually be a window to your overall health. And the amount of fat or adipose tissue you carry on your face has a lot to do with your weight, which is why one of the first places weight change shows up is on your face. Now, everyone's talking about it. So what weight or BMI corresponds to the most attractive face for you? Before we dive deeper into this topic, we need to make something clear. As an aesthetic provider, my job is to maximize your beauty by telling you ways that you can enhance your look. I'm gonna share some powerful insights into one of the most important but overlooked factors when it comes to looking your best. What I cannot directly do is help you lose or gain weight. But what I can tell you is how your facial fat affects your appearance, how it can be a marker for your overall health, how it impacts how you're gonna age, how facial fat impacts getting injectables like Botox filler and Sculptra. And I'll tell you the one thing that you can do that's in your control to prevent sagging skin. And I'll share how leveraging your body weight can sometimes even replace the need for filler. I do want to acknowledge that we're going to be referencing BMI, and there are flaws with it. It doesn't take into account your muscle mass and bone density. So people who are very muscular, like athletes, may have a high BMI and classified as overweight when they're not because of increased muscle mass. Nevertheless, BMI is still a simple way to assess weight categories, and studies show that it correlates with future health risks. It just shouldn't be the only screening method that you use. So... Back to the million dollar question, what BMI corresponds to the most attractive face? Science says a healthy weight is the most preferred weight to look at. Studies show that the most attractive faces correspond to a BMI of about 19 for women and 23 for men, even across cultures, which corresponds to a healthy BMI. And interestingly, studies show that most people like to gaze at faces that correspond to a BMI on the lower end of that range. Why is that? People with lower facial adiposity are considered attractive because they're seen as healthier due to the strong link between increased body weight and negative health outcomes. But back in time and currently today, in some third world countries like Mauritania, being heavier was seen as prosperous and of higher class because having more weight on you signified you are wealthy enough to eat in abundance and less likely to starve to death because the general population struggled with food shortages and famine. The association between wealth and increased body mass was reflected in the art of many different cultures for both sexes. Excess weight signified good health and wealth until around the early 1900s. Actress Lillian Russell was around 200 pounds at the peak of her career. She was a reigning sex symbol, hailed as the embodiment of American beauty. But nowadays, obesity is associated with comorbidities such as cardiovascular disease, diabetes, hypertension, gallbladder disease, and stroke. Body size has an impact on a variety of social judgments, including attractiveness, strength, dominance, leadership, and employment. Rebel Wilson says she felt invisible and that people treat her differently now that she lost weight. And it can work both ways, with people judging those as too skinny. Comment below if you were ever motivated to lose or gain weight after seeing a friend or celebrity do so. Facial fat and its relationship to abdominal fat, a marker for disease, is predicting health all in your face. We have known in medicine for years that a person's face can show signs of certain diseases of the liver, kidney, and endocrine systems, as they can cause a face to have increased facial volume, and a lack of facial volume could mean you were malnourished or suffering from an eating disorder. Well, the fat on your face could be a major clue about your health, and several studies have found a relationship between facial fat and abdominal fat, which has important implications for disease risk. There are two types of fat. Subcutaneous fat is the fat under your skin, the kind that you can grab and pinch between your fingers, and visceral fat, a type of fat that's stored within your abdominal cavity and surrounds your vital organs such as the liver, pancreas, and intestines. It's considered to be more dangerous than subcutaneous fat. An overabundance of visceral fat is a strong predictor of cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, and certain types of cancer. Turns out that visceral fat is not exclusive to our abdominal cavity. We can find it in our buccal fat pad region, 
Buccal fat is the area of fat that's between your cheekbone and jawbone, but it extends beyond these areas. It gained a lot of attention back in late 2022 after the surgery that's been around for years known as buccal fat removal went viral. Many people seek this procedure to achieve a more chiseled, sculpted appearance because Buccal fat plays a significant role in the shape of your face. Turns out that our buccal fat pad and abdominal visceral fat appear to be histologically and metabolically similar. And because of this, the buccal fat pad is sometimes referred to as the visceral fat of the face. Recent and ongoing studies show that those who have increased buccal fat are more likely to have increased visceral fat independent of one's body mass index. So if you have a lot of facial fat in the buccal region, which displays as chubby cheeks, the temples, which is known as bitemporal obesity, and the preauricular area known as sideburn fat, otherwise known as sideburn obesity syndrome, it could mean you're at an increased risk for cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes, as all three areas correspond with the buccal fat pads and their extensions. You can tell a lot about a person from their face. Humans evolve to be super perceptive to facial cues associated with attractiveness. Even though we may not realize it, we're constantly scanning faces and making subconscious judgments about things like health, genetics, fitness, and behavior. It's been shown that people can accurately detect how much fat someone carries in their face in order to make judgments about their body weight, which can serve as an effective clue to health, as a higher or lower than average body weight could be indicative of a person's past, current, and future health problems. So what happens to the face as we lose or gain weight? How does that affect our facial features? A high abundance of fat in the face hides and obscures your facial features. The fatty areas in your cheeks, our buccal fat pads, get larger, and this tremendously contributes to the fullness of our faces. An abundance of fullness to this area will conceal the definition of your cheekbones, and the cheeks are the largest facial unit. They play a significant role in our facial contour. The eyes may also appear smaller due to the widening of the face. Increasing BMI leads to a rounding and widening of the mid and lower face as the chin and cheek area become broader, as well as widening of the nose and the corners of the mouth become more downturned. Fat also accumulates to the jowls, the neck, and underneath the chin, giving the appearance of a double chin, which conceals or hides the jawline. What happens to our faces if we lose too much weight? If we lose too much weight or become malnourished, our facial fat and tissue atrophy to the temples and orbital bone, making our facial bones become more prominent, especially the cheek area and jawline, contributing to the face having a skeletonized appearance. Loss of fat to the mid-cheek and buccal region causes sunken appearance, and the width of the lower face decreases. These signs can also be seen in cases of lipoatrophy, which is the loss of fat tissue that can happen with certain chronic diseases, commonly seen in HIV-infected individuals treated with highly active antiretroviral therapy. Matthew McConaughey lost 50 pounds to betray an AIDS patient in the movie Dallas Buyers Club. This can also happen from the normal aging process, but to a lesser degree if you fall into the facial aging category of sinker, as I discussed in the facial aging categories video. So how does facial fat affect how you're going to age? In order to maintain a youthful appearance, the human face yearns for fullness. This is why the French actress Catherine Deneuve coined the famous term, at a certain age, it's either your fanny or your face. Having a very fit body generally makes you look more youthful, but as you get older and the natural aging process begins, you lose facial fat and collagen to the skin. So people with a low BMI, especially those who are very fit, like runners or people who do a lot of cardio or are on a low caloric diet, they tend to notice the changes of facial aging sooner than people of higher BMI who are heavier. As we age, especially as you approach the age of 40, we'll tend to notice the loss of facial fat. So people who are very lean usually have more wrinkles and loss of elasticity. This is why wrinkles are much more noticeable on people with very thin skin tissue. The more fat on our faces, the less we notice wrinkles and sagging skin because the fat helps fill out skin tissue, and this can camouflage the aging process. This is why a lot of patients who get injectables typically don't fall into the higher end of the obese or extremely obese BMI categories because I don't feel they notice the signs of aging to their faces. Now, if they've lost a lot of weight, maybe 15 or 30 pounds or more, that's when I feel they come in because now they've noticed their faces have lost volume and they feel that they look older. This is what's happening with the phenomenon known as Ozempic face. Ozempic is a popular drug approved for type 2 diabetes that some people are using as a weight loss drug, especially among Hollywood. People 
on the drug have noticed that their faces became saggier, gaunt looking, and older. But the medication is not actually causing this. It's because when you lose weight, especially a significant amount of weight, the facial fat and volume in the face decreases, which is why the term ozempic face is misleading. It's nothing new. Any method of weight loss can do this, especially rapid weight loss like the kind after bariatric surgery. What's the most significant thing that you can do to prevent sagging skin? Avoid gaining too much weight and losing it fast. As you gain weight, the skin stretches, and the heavier you become, the more the skin has to stretch to accommodate. Collagen and elastin fibers, which play a key role in skin retraction, increasingly get damaged, and the more weight you gain, the more the skin is stretched. And if the skin remains stretched for an extended period of time, the more loss of elasticity to the skin. And as such, when you lose weight, it's harder for the skin to recoil because the fibers were stretched. The leftover excess skin is directly proportional to how much weight was gained from the skin being stretched. And this is why a lot of those who undergo bariatric surgery get skin grafting surgery after their rapid weight loss. The best way to prevent skin laxity after weight loss is to do your best to lose weight at a slow and steady pace rather than rapidly. The good thing about facial skin is that it doesn't fill in with as much extra weight as other parts of the body. So because of this, it's a little bit more resilient and it can recoil a little bit better than the skin on the body after you lose weight. But there's still sagging that can happen because the skin tissue was essentially stretched. This patient had lost a lot of weight, over 100 pounds, and she noticed loss of volume and sagging skin. And this is after we did a liquid facelift, utilizing five syringes of filler to her mid face, under eyes, lips, marionette lines, and the area around her mouth. This is why people turn to injectables. No matter what weight category you're in, we're all gonna lose volume and age, but at least you don't have to choose between your fanny or your face. Here's an example of how someone could leverage their body weight so that they don't need as much filler, or maybe they won't need any filler. Let's say these two people want to enhance their cheeks and jawline because they desire more definition and structure, but they're 20 or more pounds above their ideal body weight. I could give them more definition if I were to treat them with filler to those areas, but I would have to add more volume, which means more syringes of filler to overpower the thickness of their facial adiposity or facial fat. But let's say they lose weight. Bam, look what happens. There's definition to their cheeks and jawline with zero filler needed. So they gained two positives. They didn't have to spend a dime on filler and they have more defined facial features. Which usually leads to increased self-esteem and confidence. The amount of body fat you carry makes a big difference in the amount of definition you see to your muscles. Well, the face works the same way. It's been said that for visible cheekbone and jawline definition, an ideal body fat percentage to show off your facial bones is said to be around six to 13% for men and 15 to 20% for women, but it can vary per individual based on the type of facial features you have and your age. So if someone is overweight and they desire more defined facial features, the best thing they can do is lose weight. Just scrolling through Reddit, you can see the transformations. Here you can see Drew Barrymore in Poison Ivy. She lost weight for this role, and her face has more definition because she has less facial fat, versus on the right, she has more facial fat. Comment below and let me know if you appreciate the difference because this definitely impacts getting filler. So here's another way of how you can leverage your body weight with injectables. Let's say someone has a high BMI, and she's starting to notice sagging to her cheek and jawline area. If I were to treat her with filler, I would have to utilize more volume of product to compensate for the abundance of facial adipose tissue or facial fat because it's more dense and heavier, so it'll take more product to volumize the tissue and give it support. Also, you don't want to add too much volume to the face because it already has a lot of volume, and this is why thread lifts become very appealing for those who have thicker skin who may be a bit heavier because they don't want to add more volume to their face. I understand how they're appealing, especially to those who maybe have a higher BMI or have very thick skin with very heavy tissue, but I'm not a fan of threadless because to me, it's like you're tacking the skin up with barbed wire or holding it up with thumbtacks. We age because we lose volume everywhere on the face, globally. Not because the skin loses support in specific vectors, which is how thread lifts work. They lift your skin in vectors. I've known providers in the aesthetic field and patients who have had thread lifts done, and their thoughts on them were that they do work immediately to lift the tissue. But the problem I've heard from many patients and providers is that they don't last very long and they're very expensive. And some have PLLA in them to stimulate collagen, but if it did stimulate collagen, I would think that they'd likely stimulate collagen 
in the thin vectors that you're placing them in. If you want to stimulate collagen, I would do Sculpture because you can treat beyond vectors and can spread the product diffusely into the tissue. I also don't love the idea of threads being in my skin, just hanging out inside. I mean, do you feel them in the skin? Maybe, I don't know. These are just my thoughts. Comment below, let me know what you think. Do you know anyone who had thread lifts done? Have you had thread lifts done? So let's say she loses weight. The skin will become less dense and heavy. It'll become easier to restore the loss of facial volume, less product will be needed, and she'll likely get a better result. What's the best thing a fit person can do to maintain youthfulness? The best thing a very lean person can do is to restore the loss of facial volume. My favorite product to do this with is Sculptra, and I use filler sparingly. There are places that you can't put Sculptra to, so there'll always be a place for filler. The whole reason why we do injectables is to look our very best. Now, you have the insight on how your facial fat impacts your looks. I hope this video may have motivated some to look into their health, not just to enhance your appearance, but to take steps towards living a healthier lifestyle. Even if you're not ready to make the changes right now, you can still start making small, impactful changes that'll help you feel more confident and attractive in your own skin. But don't forget to check these other videos out to learn how you can look more naturally beautiful.